Welcome everybody, Phoenix3 here, and this here is kind of going to be a video response to Velocify's video on the uh, Mega Sableye Suspect Test. In this video, I do have to agree with a lot he says here. I personally don't want to see Mega Sableye banned because I don't think it is a problem. I think it is a perfect counter that should exist in Smogon's meta. Now my opinions on Shadow Tag are a little different simply because Shadow Tag does restrict play. It um it does it, it punishes people for playing too safe. And when you have a Pokemon like Gothitelle, that's normally the avid user of it, it'll trick its choice item to you and you can't do anything while it plus six is on you with calm mind. You know, a Pokemon like Cresselia gets trapped in. Um any bulky support Pokemon, for the most part, gets trapped in. It gets locked into its support move, and then you kind of get wrecked from there. Like, my teams tend to be extremely heavy on special attackers. So that would be something that would straight up destroy my team. So, I mean, I'm not opposed to it going away. I generally don't like trapping um, things that are on abilities. If it was something like a move, then maybe it'll be different but it does require you to be or it requires you to have very specific uh, things to be able to deal with it Mega Sableye in my opinion doesn't do this yeah it's a strong Pokemon but what Mega isn't it has two really good abilities Prankster before it Megas and then after it Megas Magic Bounce so when you Mega you could do something like a Prankster Will-O-Wisp since your priority is already set for the turn you can mega into a magic bounce, burn something, and then bounce back whatever support move your opponent wants to throw at you. That is really strong, but I feel it should exist in Smogon's meta because their meta is very setup heavy and tend to want you to plus six sweep something. And Mega Sableye isn't having any of that. One of the uh, things that he did bring up was the fact that Mega Sableye completely destroys entry hazard setters and in my opinion that's perfectly fine with me because I do not like stealth rocks at all that move should be banned but it's not Mega Sableye kinda takes a dump all over that and says oh you wanna use your rocks well here you can have them back and Mega Sableye can't prevent your opponent from setting rocks up the entire game which is fine in my books because you guys see my struggle in my videos with stealth rock Oftentimes, I have to sacrifice Latias just to remove rocks, and that's not a fair trade off, especially when Smogon says they have a balanced meta, but they allow a move like that to stick around that effectively cripples four Pokemon types, some losing 25 and 50 percent of the health on switching. This isn't something that a balanced meta should have. He goes in further to say which is what I've been saying for the longest time, is that Smogon is trying to do anything in their power to make sure nothing messes with Stealth Rock. Smogon wants a meta where if you're not calcing Stealth Rocks in your damage, then you're not playing the game right. That is Smogon's entire meta. Their meta involves around Stealth Rocks. All of their damage calculations says Pokemon should be able to do XX damage to Pokemon. And all of this is um, calculated with Stealth Rocks. Like, it'll be a 96% chance to one-hit KO after Stealth Rocks damage. Like, that's what all of their calcs are like. Or um, there's a 2% chance to knock out this Pokemon after Stealth Rocks damage and Leftovers recovery. Like, all of their damage calcs are center focused around stealth rocks mega sableye destroys that you know it takes this ideal meta that they're trying to create and throws it into a crapshoot like one of the big arguments for it was that it makes hazards harder to set i personally don't think this is a bad thing because of how easy hazards are to set number one and how effective it is against every single Pokemon in the uh, in the game, especially those weak to it. That 
Smogon is trying to make this this meta where if it doesn't happen exactly how it is supposed to happen on paper, then we have to ban it. Um, they even go in and say something about uh, Mega Pidgeot and Togekiss. I didn't really care for that, but they did bring it up. They say um, Mega Pidgeot is too good against offense. And my simple like retort to that is, well, if you want to play a team full of Pokemon with paper-thin defenses, then you deserve to get swept by a Mega Pidgeot. Because, I mean, that's not how... A Pokemon battle is supposed to be, in my opinion. Um, I feel a Pokemon team is supposed to consist of attackers and defenders, uh, just basically the way the game is is built. If you want to use a team that's full of hyper offensive attackers that can't take hits from anything, then you deserve to get swept by something faster that can hit you harder. I mean, I don't consider Mega Pidgeot a glass cannon, but it can, it's not taking hits too well itself either. And the whole thing here with Smogon is that they want to ban everything that's a threat to their their ideas. Um, Mega Sableye is the biggest one because Stealth Rocks is what Smogon uses to aid in their sweeps. You know, Smogon will say, you know... A lot of skill went into my game when I 6 old my opponent with a plus 6 Dragon Knight that got Dragon Dances up. But simply because the opponent didn't have anything to deal with it. They're talking about, you know, things that remove autonomy from the game. You know, these are things that um, players can't control. A player can't control when a Pokemon is going to come in and get a Dragon Dance up. And then proceeds to sweep their entire team because for the most of the battle they were on even grounds and the opponent managed to find that one opportunity where he could dragon dance and then win the game from there um, a player can't control when a critical hit happens a player can't control when an attack's secondary effect happens i mean a lot of the time you have small gone players fishing for hacks that they so hate and complain about I don't understand this mentality. Like, whenever I hear a balanced metagame, a balanced metagame, or a balanced game in general, is something where all players of um, equal or similar skill level can compete on an equal playing field without too many, um, like, external or uncontrollable effects. The only time I would actually advocate a ban for something is if something is straight up too good in Pokemon there aren't too many things that I consider too good like let's take a look at Unaware Clefable for a second I would consider Unaware Clefable something that I would consider for a ban simply because of the way mechanics work Unaware makes it to where it ignores all of your opponents um, stat stat gains so any it's like a plus six Tyranitar will only be do, doing neutral damage to a Cafable with Unaware as if it didn't have the uh, the plus six. But the thing is, is Unaware doesn't ignore Cafable's boost. It only ignores the opponent. So a Cafable can plus six on you with Calm Mind, still knock you out in one hit, but you can't hit it back. I would consider Unaware to be overpowered because it's such a one-sided ability. And when a Pokemon can get set up and do well with that setup, it makes it harder to deal with it because you technically only have a 6% chance to either knock it out in one hit, and that's through a critical hit, if you can knock it out in one hit. You know, the risk-reward with that type of thing is good. Of course, not everybody um, uses that, but Mega Pidgeot was banned simply because of the uh, confusion... Uh, chance along with the uh, roost the uh, work up um, hurricane and uh, refresh set like it was only banned because of that so if we could ban Pokemon because of move sets then we should at least be able to look at things that are clearly one-sided stealth rocks is a move that deals type effective damage on a Pokemon that switches in it's not like it's being attacked or anything it's a move that you set up once, 
and it does type based um, damage. So this does create a problem because you are effectively removing four types of Pokemon from the game. Now, Smogon's common response to that is, well, these Pokemon were shit before Stealth Rocks, and Stealth Rocks just make them a little more shittier. It's like, well, even a Pokemon that is shit should be able to not switch in and lose 25% of its health or 50% of its health to Stealth Rocks. They say, well, we use it to check things like um, multi-scale Dragonite, uh, Talonflame, Volcarona. Well, Talonflame and Volcarona didn't exist when Stealth Rocks was created. Multi-scale Dragonite didn't exist either. But these are just new concepts that recently came into the game during 5th and 6th generation. So they're trying to find ways to keep this move Stealth Rock in the game. But they want to remove things that can do it. The reason they don't remove things like uh, Defog, for example, is because, well, all the Pokemon that get Defog, or most of them, are weak to them, are weak to Stealth Rock. So, like, Zapdos has to take 25% before it can remove rocks. Pidgeot has to take 25% before it can remove Stealth Rock. And this is a problem because uh, Mega Pidgeot can take a hit from um, a lot of Pokemon, but it will usually take between 77 and 80%. You know, at the Stealth Rocks damage, it can't take those hits anymore. And they want to keep these moves. They want to remove everything that's a threat. Like, the only reason Landorus Eye was um, banned was simply because of the fact that it's a threat to um, their Heat Ran. And I'm going to just take a look here at, like, the, um, the uh, stats here. Because this here was one thing that I was um, kind of curious about. So let's see. An Earth Power from a um, Landorus Eye, you know, with Sheer Force and Life Orb, does 171% to a specially defensive Heatran. You can see how that is a problem right you know they don't want pokemon like this to be around because it's a threat to their pokemon you know heat ran is a pokemon in my opinion that has perfect typing it is it has all the bulk in the world and it resists a lot of things its only prominent weakness is ground um it does have a water weakness but a lot of water pokemon that are using smog on its meta are bulky so something like a Vaporeon will do like 21% to a Heat Ran with Scald, you know. That's something Heat Ran can eat up for days. He, heat Ran doesn't care about that. I mean, it doesn't want to take Scalds from a Vaporeon or anything like that. But if it has to, it can. But they remove threats like this who had low uses. I think at the time, Landorus Eye was at like 6% usage. Something that Mega Sableye is at right now. But it was banned because... Of how strong it is against their heat ran you know small gun has a meta where four types of pokemon aren't used but other pokemon are favored in this meta and that's simply because of stealth rock mega sableye says you know i'm not going to give you your rocks even when i talk to a um a mod in pokemon showdown about it um he banned me from the chat because he said i was um shit posting so I directly PM'd him and told him, it's like, dude, man, all I'm trying to do is talk about Stealth Rocks and see if we can possibly get a suspect test for it. Because in my opinion, I believe Stealth Rocks needs to go. It's too centralizing. And his, um, his response to that was, well, you shouldn't be using Pokemon that are weak to Stealth Rock. You know, this is from a mod that said that. You shouldn't be using Stealth Rock weak Pokemon. And I said, well, you're telling me that I can't use something like an Articuno? That I, I can't use it? And he's like, well, no, I didn't say you can't use it. I'm like, well, yeah, that's what you just said. You said I shouldn't be using Pokemon weak Stealth Rock. Articuno is a Stealth Rock weak Pokemon. So why can't I use it? Articuno is a great special wall if it doesn't come in losing 50% of its health. And he straight up told me, well, if you want to... If you don't want to lose half your health to Stealth Rock, then don't use Pokemon that are weak to it. And I was like, well, isn't that part of the problem? 
you know, just a centralizing. Like, I don't make the rules. Smogon made the rules. Smogon set the standards for what is considered centralizing. Now, we don't have a clear definition of it, like Melissa Fy said. He said if they would have said something like if it started at 4% or something, something that we can gauge when centralization starts. But Smogon doesn't do that. It's simply at the whim of whoever wants to suspect test something feels when it should go into it. Like going back to the uh, Mega Pidgeot uh, suspect test, everybody kept saying, oh, the Pokemon is centralizing. You know, you have to have special teams to beat it. But the one thing people um, refused to look at was that you don't have to have special teams to beat it. Everybody kept saying is like, well, everybody has to use Empoleon, everybody has to use Blissey, everybody has to use these Pokemon just so they can have something to deal with it. But after um, Pidgeot was banned from the latter, people were still using Blissey. People were still using Empoleon. So why were people still using these Pokemon? Well, so the fact is simple. Well, they weren't using it to counter Pidgeot. They were just using it because they are good Pokemon to use in general. And that's the way that... I feel about it. They remove things that are a threat to them. Like I said before, because nobody uses um, flying types in Smogon, Smogon feels like they don't have to prepare for flying stab because nobody uses them. You know, nobody wants to use a Pokemon that switches in and lose 25% of their health, but when they come across a team that has prepared for their shenanigans and they start firing off no guard hurricanes all of a sudden they're like oh my god i mean this is incredibly broken i don't have any resist for this stab hurricane that's coming at me and their simple response is well i'm gonna go on the forums and complain about it and it's not like anybody can complain about it it's the extreme top that complains about it smogon only suspect tests something when they feel that it's a threat to their team. Like they'll be saying, oh, well, I'm 1950 on the ladder and you're not a better player than me. It's like, well, yeah, if I were to create my own set of rules in which I can do well, I too would also be 1950 on the ladder. I can simply make a set of rules, say we're going to ban stealth rocks. We're going to ban all ice, rock and lightning type attacks set up some obscure like rules to where all those type Pokemon are really bad and then I'll be sitting on the top of the ladder with a mono flying team and they'd be like yeah I'm the best Pokemon player in the world because can't nobody beat me when in fact all I simply did was remove all the ways that somebody could beat me and just go on bragging that's the way I feel here like I personally don't think Mega Sableye is a problem. Yeah, it's a good Pokemon. When I see one, I prepare for it. I know what Mega Sableye wants to do, so I try to keep my Vaporeon alive so I can try to get a Scald off on it and maybe get a Burn. You know, I don't use Fairy types. So yeah, Mega Sableye is strong against my team simply because I don't have a, an effective way to deal with it. But just because I don't have an effective way to deal with something doesn't mean that I want it banned. That simply means you gotta go back and fix your team. You gotta go back and do something something on your team's not working if you're going to get swept by this somebody said to me well if you don't want to get swept by a pokemon with dragon dance then you should be able to do something about it my simple response is to that well i don't have a way to deal with it you know my only way to deal with something like that is to either burn it which is something that mega charizard x and mega alteria don't care about um or i can paralyze it but that doesn't mean anything if I had to switch in my Cresselia into um, a Choice Scarf Latios' Draco Meteor, and it took a crit. So now I lost my way to counter that. And that's what Pokemon, or that's what Smogon wants Pokemon to be. They want Pokemon to be, this is how it's going to be on paper. If a Pokemon battle is going to last 50 turns, they already know how all 50 of those turns are going to happen. Turn one, so and so is going to use Stealth Rod. Turn two, so and so is going to use this. Turn three, so and so is going to use this. Turn 37, so and so is going to switch in Cresselia into my Latios. Latios will use Draco Meteor and it will be a crit and it will deal 84% to Cresselia. It's like, well, I mean, that pretty much 
kills my um my chance that I had to do with it because now he's simply just going to stay in Draco again and knock out my Cresselia when I was opposed that I could have taken two. Even the uh, last time I was fighting um, a Latios with my Cresselia, this Latios was at minus four. So I figured, you know, maybe I can click Calm Mind since I'm still at like, what, 70% health or something like that. I was above 50%. So it's like, okay, I'm going to set up because I don't need to click Moonlight. He does Draco and gets a crit. It's like, okay, well, what am I supposed to do about that? You guys even seen in a video where that's happened twice to my Vaporeon. My Vaporeon's at 88% health. Okay, I can take a Draco, so I'm going to click Wish. So that way when Latios, well, Latios goes to minus two, I can simply um, protect the next turn, get my health back, whatever. Nope, Latias gets a crit with Draco Meteor, and my Vaporeon dies. I mean, it's not like I don't have counterplay. I do have counterplay, but they're just things I can't control, and I can't control when a 6% chance happens. So what is Smogon going to do? They could create a ladder where critical hits don't happen. I mean, they create ladders where they change the mechanics and moves all the time. They just recently had the same type Stealth Rock ladder where... Of my Pokemon using Stealth Rock creates the move in the same type as the Pokemon using it. So if a ground type were to use Stealth Rock, Stealth Rock turns into a ground type attack. That'd be really good because Heat Ran loses 50% of its health. But, you know, they do change mechanics like this so they can see how it'd be like if they were to actually make, make the games. And this is simply just not fair from a balance standpoint. Like, I will only ban something if something can not be played like when new games come out people don't automatically go and say okay we need to ban this gun because it shoots too fast and it does too much damage well we need to ban this character because this character um has like plus frames on their attack and can't be challenged no they don't say we're not going to ban it they say right now this character is a strong character but we're going to wait for the meta to develop the problem with Pokemon is Pokemon is always a constantly evolving mega or meta. Like nobody expected Clefable to be good. And then people started using it and it jumped up from its low tier placing all the way straight up to OU. You know, the thing is here with Smogon is they don't want the meta to develop. The second something threatens their idea of what um, a Pokemon battle should be like, they instantly set up a suspect test and then hive mind mentality comes in oh yes um hyper offense can't switch into a pidgeot hurricane then you shouldn't be using hyper offense then if you know that may pidgeot shits on your hyper offense team then you should be you should build better teams but smogon wants to have this thing to where Hyper offense has to exist, where stall has to exist, where balance has to exist. I feel balance should be the only team types that everybody are playing because nobody's going to willingly go into a competitive environment with only one type of strategy and expect to win. I mean, if I go on OU ladder, high OU ladder with a with a mono bird team, how far do you think I'm going to get with that? I'm not going to get very far because Stealth Rocks destroys it. But other people on the ladder can show up with Mono Dark and other stuff like that. Like um, Bisharp, for example. Bisharp commonly has three Dark type moves on his on his set and Swords Dance. Where else would you be allowed to get away with that? That shouldn't work, but it does because Smogon sets up the rules in which it can work. Why else is Hoopa U in OU? Because Smogon sets up the rules in which it can do well. Well, you can U-turn a Hoopa U and it dies. Well, by that same logic, then why isn't ho oh in OU? Since literally everybody uses Stealth Rocks and Stone Edge. ho oh would have a hard time in OU, so why not drop it? Oh, because of Sacred Fire Burn Chance? Smogon wants to protect their physical attackers. They don't want their physical attackers getting burned. But they have all of these huge special walls that completely shit over my team. And when I say, oh, you know, Chansey is too good, they're like, oh, well, you can use a physical attacker. Well, these people can use things that they don't want to use. 
it is okay for them to use an argument like this when it's against their ideal meta but the second you use this exact same argument about them where you say it should be a certain way they all attack you oh you're just a scrub at the game it's like well how am i a scrub at the game when i see it for how it is you banned mega lucario because of how strong it is and not being able to predict what it is and that it can run mixed sets that you have to wait till you get hit by mega lucario before you can figure out what it is and then when i say well why don't you ban charizard or both charizards for the same reason and they say, oh, well, because, you know, you can typically tell which Charizard you're dealing with. It's like, well, no, you can't. Because if you stay in on a Charizard expecting it to be Charizard X and you're expecting a Dragon Knight and it mega evolves into Charizard Y and hits you in the face with a fire boosted fire blast, then you just lost a Pokemon. If you stay in expecting it to be Charizard Y and it turns out to be Charizard X and it gets a Dragon Dance on you, then what do you do? What if you don't have a fairy Pokemon on your team? Not a lot of teams have fairy types. So now you just gave your opponent a free swords or a, few, a free dragon dance because you thought it was going to be Charizard Y. So why is it that we get to have these standards for one Pokemon and not another? I don't get it. They say, oh, we need Stealth Rock for balance. Why? Why do you need Stealth Rock for balance? When it effectively cripples four Pokemon types collectively. Oh, well, we need it to stop these Pokemon. Well, you could just ban those Pokemon, or you could just ban that ability. There's nothing wrong with banning abilities. Multi-scale is too strong on Dragonite. So you either move Dragonite up to Uber, or you ban Multi-scale. A Pokemon like Milotic. Milotic has... Does Milotic have Multi-scale? I think it's Marvel scale. I don't know. Let me check real quick. Well, I want to I want to see what my Lodic has. My Lodic has Marvel scale and competitive, I think. But either which way, um, I think as of now, like Dragonite is the, the most prominent user of multi scale. So why not just ban that ability? Why does Dragonite deserve to lose 25% of its health switching in and not something like Tyranitar? I mean, if Stealth Rocks affect every Pokemon equally, then I simply wouldn't care. But it doesn't. And this is what Mega Sableye does. Mega Sableye says, you know, this move is too strong against me. I'm going to remove it. Mega Sableye is just counterplay. That's that's all it is. You've got Megas that are pure offense. You've got Megas that are pure defense. And you've got me um, Megas that are anti-meta. Sableye is anti-meta. And Smogon doesn't like that. Yeah, it has a strong ability. It has two strong abilities. But... Gotta learn to deal with it. Fairy types exist. Use them. If you don't want to change your team because you feel it's centralizing, then welcome to my world. Why should I have to change my team just to deal with Stealth Rocks? But y'all expect that of me, so I expect you to use what the game gave you. If this means you have to take a Pokemon off your team just to be able to deal with this one, then so be it. I have to change movesets just so I can deal with Stealth Rock. It'd be nice if a Pokemon I like to learn Magic Bounce. They don't. But then the thing is, is where does this come in for other Pokemon? Mega Absol has Magic Bounce. Espeon has Magic Bounce. Maybe Smogon doesn't like bulky Pokemon with Magic Bounce. And that's just the only problem. Again, the uh, problem is that they don't want to wait for the game to develop. They simply want to have it their way all the time. Oh, well, this Pokemon is really strong against my Pokemon that shouldn't have any checks or counters. So we got to ban it. Oh, Mega Pidgeot is too good in UU. We got to ban it. While they still leave Mega Aerodactyl and Mega Beedrill. And, I mean, Mega Aerodactyl is bulkier than um, Mega Pidgeot. It's faster and has more utility, but they keep that around. Mega Beedrill personally doesn't care about Mega Pidgeot, like, at all. I mean, Mega Pidgeot has to run, like, a specialized set, like mine was running, just so I could not die to Mega Beedrill every time it came in. But, 
you know, they don't care about that. They like their fast, powerful Pokemon because they want to be able to check certain things. Oh, this Pokemon should be able to switch into this one 100% of the time and survive an attack and either knock out or scare the Pokemon out. Mega Pidgeot can bullshit his way around his counters. So, I mean, 10% of the time, Zapdos can bullshit his way around its counters. They can switch in something like a Charizard X, expecting to get a free Dragon Dance on me, then it gets paralyzed. Well, I guess you got to ban Zapdos now because of that 10% chance it could paralyze a Pokemon. Hell, what if I decide to replace um, Thunderbolt with Discharge? Which is something I might do now, considering how powerful you know, Hax is in the game. I mean, Zapdos is not getting one-hit knockouts on things anyway. So I could reduce my attack power by 10 and gain a 30% chance of paralyzing something. Why not? What if that becomes the new meta where people simply just don't use moves like Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, or uh, Flamethrower to where they use a lesser power move version of the move just so they have a greater chance of getting a secondary effect? Why not? I mean, Blissey is a perfect counter for Mega Pidgeot grab Blissey, uh, slap Thunder on it, um, Serene Grace, and now you got a 60% chance to paralyze Mega Pidgeot. Pidgeot doesn't want to take a Thunder from a Blissey, and if I were to just calc that right now, Mega Pidgeot and Blissey, I can't even spell Thunder right. And Thunder, Thunder does an un. Now this Blissey is un uninvested bold. Thunder is doing 48.7 to 57.7% damage to Mega Pidgeot, and then you gain the 60% chance that you'll uh, that you'll uh, paralyze it with Serene Grace. Even if you don't want to run Serene Grace. You still have, you know, the thirty percent chance to paralyze it. But I mean, this here is what an adapting meta is right here. Blissey is still bulky enough to take hits, even if you wanted to run something like Max Special Attack Blissey, then you would gain a guaranteed two-hit knockout on Mega Pidgeot versus um, a chance to. Um, uh, to hit knockout, even though there is a 96% chance you will to hit knock knock it out. But this is what an evolving meta does. Is okay. Mega Pidgeot is a threat in UU. What do I do? Okay, a large amount of the teams are already using um, Blissey. Maybe I uh, change it to where my Blissey is now Serene Grace, which doesn't really affect its usability any because the Blissey still learns things like aromatherapy. And I can now check Mega Pidgeot because I can switch into it. it since it only takes 19% from Hurricane, I could either scare it out because there's a chance I'm packing Thunder or the Mega Pidgeot stays in, not expecting me to pack Thunder. I hit it with a Thunder since it will always hit Mega Pidgeot because of no guard. And I have a chance to paralyze it, which cripples the Pidgeot. So now you just turned what could potentially have been a bad matchup into a very great one in your favor. Simply because the meta evolved. Mega Pidgeot is a threat in UU, so what do we do? The meta evolves and learns how to handle it. If the meta can't figure out a way to handle it, which it can because this clearly does, then you ban it. Even in um, OU with Greninja, I am in favor of Greninja's ban, but there are ways to deal with it. And then you explore those ways. I feel that no Mega should have really been banned. I do agree that Mega Kangaskhan is unhealthy, but if it didn't have Sucker Punch, then maybe an argument could be made that it could stay in because a lot of things deal with it. But this is the problem, though. Smogon doesn't want to have a evolving meta. They simply want a meta that is exactly what they want it to be at this specific point in time. And that's a problem. 
they're not going to wait a little bit for it to change they'll simply say oh well this pokemon is too good here's a bunch of reasons why i think this pokemon is too good and then you go in from there and then they get a bunch of other people who are at the elitist status and they come in and say the same thing too it's not like i'm going to get a chance to vote against it mega pidgeot was banned before the suspect even finished they basically did what the fbi did to media fire a, um, a law passed saying that government can't get involved with shutting down um sharing sites and fbi said fuck that we're gonna shut this down and that's what smogon did with mega pidgeot it's like okay well we don't care what you say we're still going to ban it and that's that's the problem there is that they don't want any counterplay in their game if there is counterplay they want that counterplay to benefit their team like defog is okay to leave around so long as my bisharp can switch in and get a plus two on it rapid spin is okay to be around as long as i can switch my ghost type in to prevent your move from going off oh well you want to have magic bounce uh we don't like that as much but we'll let it stay in because I can knock out your Espeon in one hit. Because I can knock out your Mega Absol in one hit. Oh, Mega Sableye has it. Oh, I can't knock that out in one hit. I can't Rapid Spin against it. I can't Defog against it without lowering my evasion. I can't burn it with will o -Wiz. I can't even drop a Toxic on it. I can't even set up my Stealth Rocks against it. Oh, I can't knock it out in one hit? Oh, yeah, we got to ban that. That's just way too good too many good traits to have on a pokemon but let's not forget about heat rants perfect typing all the bands that they did to make sure it could stay good and all this other stuff no heat rain doesn't have a lot of really good perks on it it doesn't have the bulk it doesn't have the hp it doesn't have the typing it doesn't have any any of that other stuff you know you can you can it's easy to deal with only thing you have to do is taunt it <laughs> yeah but that's all i wanted to say about that and it's 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 good that another person actually saw the exact same things that i've basically been saying so i felt the need to make a response to that so if you guys like this video subscribe to my channel i will always take an opportunity to shit all over smog on if it presents itself especially if i know i'm right and um be sure to subscribe to my channel you can always be doing pokemon related content and um as always I want to thank you guys for watching my videos and i hope to see you all in the next one